Okay, hey guys. Welcome to the corner of my kit. Whoa, you see? You see this? It's like I'm reaching out at you through the screen. I feel like I'm in a 3D movie. But today, I thought we could do a video that I do a lot over on my Rachel Loves channel, which is testing overly sponsored products. And this is where I buy a whole bunch of products that I see in ads on Instagram, or I see sponsored a lot, and I wanna test them out and just see what the fuss is about, if they are worth it in my opinion. Let you guys know what's up. And I'm really excited with the products we found, and I've, I've actually found more that I just ordered to do a round two of this video. So if you want to see more of these, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos here every single Saturday. And now let's dive into the first product, which is uh, cereal. There are these right here. Magic Spoon grain-free cereal. It's a very small box, just FYI. This is not a normal sized cereal box. But these are supposed to be low carb, high protein cereals that taste like regular cereal and really highly rated. Everyone's obsessed with them. I have three different flavors here. I have cocoa, cinnamon, and fruity. So like Fruit Loops, I guess. It has a bird on it, so I can only assume. But I figured Chris and I could like taste test some of these and see what the big fuss is. Christopher, do you want, do you want to try these? Yeah. Yeah. Look at, they even have a thing on the back that says why we're special. I feel like we all need shirts that say why we're special. <laughs> That's just good marketing. <laughs> right? This is a very brawny cowboy riding a dinosaur or maybe a Godzilla. It's cinnamon. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. <laughs> well, the bird makes sense. There's a bird. The bird I get. That's Fruit Loops, right? Yeah. So, and the bird is the word. Bah, 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 bah. I want to try the uh, chocolate one first, which is why I opened that first. Yeah. Obviously. Obviously. I'm still struggling with this. Is it a metaphor? <laughs> what is the meaning? <laughs> I'm just taking handfuls of it. Some sort of animal. Oh. Nope. Nope. Started out okay. But that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. It has a, a weird crunch. That Sty styrofoam. <laughs> it's made with bits of real styrofoam. That's how you know it's good. Why is your special? Does it mention that? The styrofoam? It does contain the protein of more than a dozen eggs though. Flavor's good. The texture, okay, so the texture to me, it's like if you put bits of extra crunchy things in an already crunchy cereal and it throws off the whole balance of the already crunchy cereal. It tastes a little bit stale. Mm, I don't get the stale, but it starts off strong. Cocoa Puffs. But bad. Yeah. You really have to crunch through the end. It doesn't just sort of dissolve, which I understand because I don't think there's gluten in this one. Is it? Oh no, it's grain free, my bad. Oh no, it is gluten free. It's gluten free. It's really hard to get good foods and gluten, gluten free. It's like a rice puff texture, Whoops. but it's not. I don't know, I it's still chocolatey, so oh. I keep eating it. I wonder if it would taste better in milk. I guess we have to try it. I mean, it's a cereal. All right, you get the milk. I'm gonna open up the skinamin one with this very muscular alligator. Is that an alligator? I don't even know. Put the chocolate one in though. I want to know what that one tastes like. I mean, that's cereal the way God intended. Well, I mean, ah. Uh, Is it improved? I don't know. It was like it was not good and then it got good and then it got not good again. But it ended fine. <laughs> what a ride. But yeah. gluten free. So, yes, it's a different bar, but like Chex is gluten free <sighs> and it's phenomenal. Chocolate Chex. If you have not. Yeah tried chocolate checks go and buy some right now because we're gonna buy out the rest of all of it and obviously mm -hmm. this is better for you than chocolate checks well okay then chocolate checks yes i would rather have the chocolate checks and then have like a protein An rich egg. smoothie or something like that you know? right. but even then protein rich smoothie that's a could be anything i don't think i mind the cinnamon it doesn't have the powdery um cocoa taste Still again with the like weird crunch at the end, which is just like that extra level. That one to me is a little better. The texture is still not my favorite, but no. that's an improvement. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is, I assume, Fruit Loops. <gasps> it's so colorful. Oh my gosh, it almost matches my shirt. This pleases me. Hold on. It faintly kind of smells like Fruit Loops. Smell it, smell it. Oh, absolutely. That's exactly Fruit Loops. It's just like a like a hyped up version of it. Very aesthetically pleasing too. I am V pleased with the colors of these. Yeah. That's so pretty, it's like a rainbow. Those yellows are excellent. Oh. That's a great yellow. That is the, uh, the most fluorescent I have ever seen. They went on that. Vegetable juice for color. Cool. Huh. Those are the best of the three. Yeah, and I don't even like Fruit Loops and I would eat more of these. And I am, I'm gonna eat more of these right now. 
That got progressively better. Don't get the chocolate. Ooh. These are good. Yeah. The end, like the, there's a nice fruitiness at the end, which isn't as artificial. It's almost creamy. That's what it tastes like. It tastes like a, like a creamy, smoothie-esque, hmm. fruity flavor versus the almost watery Fruit Loop vibe. Those are so good. Okay, I can get on board for these. The fruity ones, 100%. So good. If you're gonna get a cereal with protein in them, these ones are delicious. Yeah. I'm gonna eat the rest of these. I can endorse that. Yeah. yeah. Not the cocoa though. Oh, thank you for your assistance. My pleasure. Mmm. So, so good. And now I want to take you with me uh, to go and check out a scent, like a home scent that um, I am in love with. They are these right here by Aromatech and I saw a bunch of ads for them and I've actually purchased them before off of Amazon, their Santal one was a highly rated one um, that influencers really enjoyed and I love it. And so when I saw an ad for it on Instagram, I was like, well, I guess I should buy some more then. And they are a company that basically makes really high quality essential oils and you can use them for your home and they have, I think, ones for your car as well. You can use your own diffuser for them. They also have uh, diffusers on their website as well that use like a different technology. But I bought three different really popular ones to test them all out. I have the eucalyptus because I love the name native eucalyptus and mint <laughs> deodorant. It's a weird reason to buy a fragrance, but uh, here we are. I also got the white tea and thyme and then one that's called like zesty something. What was it? Zesty champaka? Zesty champaka? But I bought three different ones and I have been testing them sort of throughout the home. I've been trying it in our bedroom versus downstairs and kind of getting a, a sense for which scents are my favorite. So first of all, the scents in general, I think smell very true to what they say in the the website. It's a really professional website, extremely highly rated. The Santal one is still and will always be my favorite. It smells like a luxe hotel is the best way I can explain it. Like I feel more productive and very like in the zone when I have Santal in my home. My second favorite has to be the eucalyptus one. It smells so fresh. It's such a nice summery scent for me. I love that one while I'm working and I'll have it here at my desk and it just, it smells incredible. The white tea and thyme one is probably the most subtle of all of the ones that I have tried. I'm trying to open the bottle with one hand. Oh, I got it. It's very light, very delicate scent. It's something that to me is more of like a spring scent and it definitely dissipates more in like the open area. I would again prefer to use it more in like a bedroom or something. My least favorite has to be the Zesty Champaka or however you pronounce it one. It's supposed to have like a, like a lemongrass kind of a scent to it. And to me it was just very like hit you in the face um, kind of a scent. And I typically like things that are, I think has like sandalwood in it and lemon and all these things and I just, it was too overpowering for me. I didn't really love it. Um, so I think my favorite is the Santal and the Eucalyptus. Those are the ones hands down that are my favorite. I think the brand is just phenomenal. There are other ones that I also wanna try and a lot of them are based off of scents from like really big hotels like, like the Westin. So this will not be my first foray into the Aromatex. I want more, I want a whole collection. I wanna collect them like perfumes. But I'm really glad that I tested more of them. Thumbs up, I really enjoy them. Now I wanna take you to my basement. Uh, oh, that sounds really ominous, I'm sorry. It's a fun journey, I swear, because I want to share with you guys a product that is so ridiculously highly rated and my mother-in-law actually bought it for my kids for Christmas and she was like it was like the last one sold out everywhere and it is oh I thought so it's on display as I walk around a thousand oh it stepped on a Lego these couches right here nugget couches not this this is just a random pillow get that out of here these they call them couches but it's like a big set of pillows essentially, like mattresses basically. And you can set them up. They have all sorts of different covers that are in different colors. And our set, I'm not sure if they all do, but our set came with two of these like triangle ones and then one thicker set and then one thinner mattress. And I cannot tell you how much the kids play with these couches and use them for obstacle courses, for playing house and making like beds or making little houses for themselves and like standing up the nugget couches on their sides. Like they're so 
versatile. I honestly get the hype of these and why everyone is so obsessed with them. They also, by the way, very important, they do wash really well too. Like the outside um, cover comes off very easily. I've washed them before, it's been no issue. And just so many different ways to play and exercise creativity and just have a lot of fun. They've made forts with them with the uncles and aunties. And yeah, I think these things are 100% worth every ounce of the hype. They're awesome, they're awesome. And now back we go to the kitchen. Here we go, right here, because we are gonna talk about this pan. Probably gonna use it for my thumbnail. It's every, everywhere, everywhere. And it is the always one pan. This thing is just, it's constantly being advertised on every social media platform. Everyone raves about how amazing this pan is, how it is the only pan you will ever need for anything, ever. Need to deep fry it? Use the always pan. Need to cook pasta? Always pan. Need to fry an egg or something that's really difficult to use without a non-stick? Always pan. <laughs> this thing is apparently utilizable for literally anything that you would want to cook and uh, so I've been trying it for months. I feel like this is one of those products that it's just, it's not helpful to have just a singular first impression for. You really need to test it out in a lot of different cooking capacities to really form a good opinion on its usability. All right guys, first time using the always one pan. So excited, this thing is very hyped up. We'll see one pan. And so Chris and I have been using this for everything. Again, for eggs, for cooking pastas, we've made ramen in it, we've done deep frying in it, we've done like anything that you can apparently use like a cast iron for, you can use with this. And so we've been testing that angle and just really giving it some good wear and tear, if you will, or an opportunity to kind of showcase why it, everyone thinks it's so great. Also worth noting, it does come with a bunch of other little add-on pieces. There's like a strainer bit. There's also this like wooden spoon, which fits into this little notch. You guys can see that right there. I got one of the more popular colors or the ones that I've seen the most often advertised, but they have a lot of different colors. I think like eight different shades you can choose from. And um, yeah, it's not an inexpensive pan either. Like this thing is pricey. She pricey, but we've been using this so much. And like, honestly, we have gotten some good wear out of this and we continue to use it. Actually, I think Chris is here. He might have some opinions on this. Opinions on the pan? Huh? I do. I do. Here with the class. I like this. So like overall, I like it a lot. It's a good, product. I mean, I've been using it a lot, right? Which tells you, right? Like honestly. Yeah. For um, months now. So I've used it nonstick. I mean, nonstick on anything won't last forever, but it has held up pretty well. I've tried it as a cast iron, like to sear stuff. It works. It works well, but not as well as a cast iron. So does it replace it? No, but does it do in a pinch? Absolutely. Cleans well. It's nonstick. It's nonstick, which is nice. And I like the shape. I like the size and the shape. It is versatile in that way. The high sides have actually been really useful. I've used that for a lot of things. It's just nice for stirring. Well, for like a big, like a sauce or something, or when you're making yeah. pasta for the family and stuff, like it's, it's a nice, it's a good level of depth. This is what I make ramen in almost every night. Yeah. yeah. So quibbles, things like that I don't understand. Like there's a, there's a spot here where you can tighten the handle with an Allen key and it does get loose. So you do have to tighten it. Why? Why is this not just forged? Why is this not one piece? I mean, I assume cost, but like, it's not a cheap pan. The other things, it's just kind of gimmicky stuff that it came with. Like this fits in here and that's so cute and I've never used this. Like, why? <laughs> You've uh, gotten blue. That's everything. just, I, I'm not gonna store it like this. This is not where I store my cooking utensils with the pan. I, maybe that appeals to someone. I don't like it. I don't use it. There's a knob on here that now doesn't look good. I, just aesthetically, it's not. It's not your jam. It's not high end. I don't know. It's It's aesthetic. So anyway, I don't understand this. I don't understand the, this was the steamer, right? Yeah. Yeah, we never, I was just, just saying we never used that. Never used it. I, maybe I should have tried it, but like I've never wanted to try it. You might need this for scrubbing away at the dishes. Make the whole thing cheaper. Don't include the, maybe include this as an add-on, like a side purchase that you can. If you want. Upsell the sponge. I don't know. Like this is at its core, a good product. I just get rid of the doohickeys and the thingamabobs and just make it a little more 
high end. I do like the lid too with it. it High just... dome, it's got a good handle, it doesn't get too hot. Lose this and lose this. Maybe, you know, just make this as one. This would be the Christopher pan. <laughs> yeah, it would be my favorite pan. This is my all clad non-stick skillet and it works just as well. Yeah. And it's more versatile. So that's great. Like, that's really impressive. Look at how nicely welded this is and just the handle. I mean, it just feels better. Yeah, this feels like a cheap handle. I I get that yeah. versus like a stainless steel or something like that. I do appreciate that it's a thicker handle though versus the, the all clad. I don't like that it's thin. And so. I mean, this grip on the end is nice. Like some don't have that and that's a nice thing to have. I, I don't know, it's clearly well thought out. They're just little things that are probably just cost saving things. And you know, again, no big deal. You just tighten it every now and then, but. Overall thumbs up though. Yeah, I know, it was good. I like good, that. it was a really good pan. Good. Now I wanna to talk to a coffee product that was, again, just in ads all over my Instagram, and it's Two Bears Coffee. This is a company that primarily, I think what they are known for the most is they have cans of coffee and they are in a multitude of different flavors that are flavored with oat milk and they are nitrogen infused. This is what they look like right here. Super cute packaging. I really like the kind of tall, slender kind of cans. I think that's really cool. And uh, they had a ton of different flavors again. So we ended up doing like a taste testing. We'd like pour little bits into little glasses and everyone would try them. And I think the favorite ended up being the one that Chris picked out. What was it, Chris? It was like the hazelnut? Hazelnut was really good. Hazelnut was the, that was the fan favorite. I didn't like the vanilla one as much. It kind of wasn't as creamy and it was a little hard with the vanilla flavor. Lo really liked the tea, the matcha tea. She said that was really good. Um, we haven't tried the frothed latte or just the flash brew, the black coffee. I've only tried one. I haven't been a big fan of them thus far, but I'm gonna try this one in the morning and we'll see if it lives up to the hype. It, by the way, they do also state how much caffeine is on each can, which I appreciate. So it's nice being able to see that like right there on the label. Um, so we'll try that again in the morning because it is too late. And if I have a coffee now, I will never go to sleep. We're testing the black coffee today. I'm gonna try it black first and then I'm gonna add my own kind of stuff to it. The nitrogen in it is supposed to take away any bitterness in the coffee, which I think is really interesting. Um, let's see if that's true. Hmm. As one who doesn't love black coffee, I'm trying to decide if I like it more than I would normally. You know what? That's not bad, actually. Let's add some like creamer or something to it. Ooh, pretty. All right, now try. You know what, I think I like it. Like the black coffee anyway. I'm not a big fan of the oat milk variety, though I know a lot of people do really like those. So it's nice that that's an option. And they do have like froth versions. They have uh, green matcha latte ones, like a bunch of different varieties. So they're super fun and really convenient to have them like this. We bought the uh, dark roast and the medium roast of the beans as well. Honestly, I prefer these to the flash brewed ones. That's just a personal preference. I prefer, I think, having a warm cup of coffee most mornings unless it's boiling lava hot. We got the whole beans because I just find that it just makes a better cup of coffee and um, these are really good. We order ones um, like nearby, just a local uh, coffee shop. They sell beans, so we order those. And I found that these were very comparable to those and I think they're both really fantastic. So overall, I think these are great. They're a great small business. I'm probably gonna continue to use the ones that are closer to home, um, but I think these are really good as well. And now it is nighttime and it is chilly and we are gonna be testing out a portable bonfire. It's called City Bonfires and it's like a, basically like a portable bonfire. And I appreciate that we're testing this on our fire table because this comes with very specific instructions on how to use. Step one, always put it on a very heat and fire resistant surface, like a stone or something. So I figured putting it in the place where the fire comes from makes sense. And you can see there, there is some soy wax and then they have their starters in here. You can just light it with your little lighter and then um, is good. And then you're supposed to let it burn for a while for about 20 minutes or so before you can roast marshmallows. And obviously we need to roast marshmallows. It's clearly gonna happen. Christopher, are you ready? Got my lighter. Got your lighter. Okay. So far, she a beautiful candle. Not very bonfire yet, but give it time. 
We'll check on this again, obviously monitoring it, but uh, we'll see what this looks like on camera in about 15 minutes. Ooh, look at her go, and it's windy out. It is not, I mean, it's obviously blowing heavily, but uh, still, a nice bonfire, it smells nice. I'm excited, we're gonna get some uh, marshmallows now. Okay, have all the makings of s'mores. Are you ready, Christopher? I'm very ready for a s'more. Oh, you have yours? Yeah, I got mine. All right, show me what you got. Is it soot? Because that's what mine is. It's kind of soot, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't see. know about this for marshmallows, but I'm kind of warming to it as like a aesthetic thing. Yeah, it, like it's pretty. I think it's a pretty thing and it, it feels nice like from if you're sitting close by, like it is a nice big flame. But it doesn't smell right. I wouldn't eat it. There's like soot on it. But I've already pre-cracked the graham crackers and the chocolate. So well, we'll have to put them in the oven. Yeah. Well, not these ones, a different one. So it's a yes for aesthetic, for sitting around, but not so much for marshmallows. So let me know in the comments what products you have been seeing that have been super highly sponsored or a lot of ads for different particular products that you think I should test out in the next video or maybe the video after that, depending on how quickly I can get it. And if you guys are really enjoying this, I would love to make this into a series and we can continue to buy and test a whole bunch of different products that are really viral or very over sponsored. Like I love I'm gonna say I love testing stuff and let me know if any of these products are ones that you are interested in Or have seen yourself kind of floating around Instagram or TikTok. and check out these videos on the side in case you have missed any Subscribe new videos here every Saturday, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Love you all Mwah.